Yo, what's going on guys? This is Jay Money here and rather than bringing you that part two of the um, the uh, generic link spam deck, um, I'm still going to do it, but you know, I feel like now as in today is as good a time as any to not only have a, a ban list kind of discussion slash prediction, but you know, a meta discussion at the same time as to what can conspire after the ban list, not you know the meta right now but after the we get the ban list so you know you know this ban list prediction is actually very very short because i honestly you know there sure you know in the ocd yeah there's a lot of things that did get addressed that needed to get addressed but we just don't have all the stuff that the ocd has so there's all, just so many cards that really don't need to be seeing hits this early because they're not a problem and yeah that's my sole reason and they could become a problem three months down the road when we get um flames of destruction because um as of now uh Christron needle fiber is not confirmed nor summon sorceress so um nor security dragon none of that stuff is confirmed for you know the tcg you know coming ex into uh, extreme forces so with that being said there's really no need to address them now when the cards are now because you know konami definitely is not fond and is not known for preemptively hitting cards so i really wouldn't count on it so the first thing i want to go over let's start going over the the let's start with the band cards the only band card this this isn't one of this is in the list by the way um you know, the only band card that is, I can see realistic is Master Plan. A lot of people talk about limiting, um, limiting resort. However, you know, if you wait and you, you know, still have your drone, your super agent, you still get Master Plan's effect and you can still make an absurd board. So with that being said, if Master Plan were to get banned rather than, um, uh, what was it? Um resort getting limited then it can turn spiral into you know brings it down a notch it doesn't make it over the top you can still spam uh tufts you can still spam uh super uh, you know you get your double helixes and stuff however searching out your um spiral mission cards are going to be a little bit tougher which means you're going to have to rely on foolish burial goods which makes the decks just a tad bit more inconsistent you can still play all the hand traps it's just going to be more of a control based deck that's still very much playable. Now, we're gonna go and move on to the limited cards. Now, these top two limited cards is probably the most absurd cards that you probably have seen on any ban list. And someone might even say that this is a wish list, which, you know, knowing Konami, Konami doesn't like to bring back old cards, um, nor, I don't even think they really look at a lot of the older cards, and what I mean by older cards, I mean like older spell cards. Now, these two cards are, you know, coming from banned to limited status, um, because of something I've been thinking about. You know, the thing that we, the issue that we still have at hand, regardless of what format, you know, enters what, what what the next best deck is the problem is we're still having to deal with 15 16 different hand traps at a time and you know again i've said this three four times that hand traps literally take any bad situation to make it worse so those you know i i hate the term necessary evil because you know those same hand traps work against you as well as with you. Those same hand traps um, under an established board make a board truly unbreakable, you know. Again, these some of these boards can really be broken, you know, provided your opponent doesn't have one or two hand traps in their hand to stop the board from being broken. So it just literally just fortifies any sort of resistance that's on the board. And, you know, worst case scenario, if you're playing a glass cannon deck, you... Are left with jack shit and you're probably gonna lose and that's what I don't like about hand traps again we have these other options you know kaijus evenly matched and book of eclipse and all that good stuff to where we can break the board but people choose to look to hand traps but anyway 
a lot of people are on the fence on this one. A lot of people think all the hand traps should get limited. Others think they should just all stay at three. And whatever. Regardless of what side of the spectrum I'm on, I do agree that hand traps are very, very powerful simply because there are no hard and I'm talking hard counters to them. Cypher and Gear Gamma, although it be a counter, it still isn't really much of a reliable counter within itself because you can have smart players such as myself to wait until you put a monster on board to use Ash Blossom, you know, so Cypher and Gear Gamma is no longer live. So it's like, unless you're playing World Chalice that is main decking three Herald of Orange Lights, then hand traps still need to be addressed. They're... No card should be able to, you know, go with very little to no hard counters too. And so, but I, at the same time, I don't agree with putting hand traps at one. You know, you still need to draw them, but we just need counters to them. And rather than designing a new card to counter hand traps, what better way than to bring some cards back that can do the same thing? And, you know, get ready for it. You guys are probably going to get pissed at me. But these two cards are Forceful Sentry and Confiscation. Now, why do I believe that Forceful Sentry and Confiscation... Um, I Honestly, I don't think they could come back. I, mean, I don't think Konami is even looking at these two cards. I know that they are aware of the hand trap dilemma here. But I'm, you know, I'm generally concerned that they haven't looked at these cards as a viable option to snipe hand traps out of hand you know um there is pluses and there's still you know downsides to these cards even though they are banned yes they do this one is a cost of a thousand life points you look at your hand you snipe a card this one yeah you look at your opponent's hand it's cost free but it goes back to the deck which is actually better but um you know there are some downsides with these yeah you can snipe hand traps so let's say your opponent opened multiple ash blossom um then sniping an Ash Blossom really won't wouldn't be all that effective. And I choose to put these two at limited status simply because, you know, having just one Confiscation or one Forceful Sentry, um, it's a limited card, and so it wouldn't be too much of a viable option to counter hand traps considering Cypher and Gear Gamma is at three. However, I don't want to put any of these at three, so one and one, um, both to one, it's like a semi, consider it a semi limit per se, but you know, it is excellent for sniping hand traps. Not only that, um, so you can make potentially make a better board first turn, but at the same time, on the flip side, if you're going second and your opponent has an established board and you need to check to make sure that there are no hand traps in your opponent's hand to make sure that you can, you know proceed with trying to break the board or at least you know attempting to then it helps you out in that regard you know i've again i've always been on the side of every player every deck deserves to build their board we just need more ways to break the boards that's all no board is truly unbreakable unless you know there's a vanities fiend and something that stops spells you know, Raw Sphere Mode is always a card. I mean, it did just get a special edition print, but that's not viable enough. Now, enough about these cards. I've said my piece with them. It is literally just for hand traps uh, purposes on addressing the issue, but not hitting the hand traps directly and not making a hand trap that just deals with hand traps. So, um, because that can get kind of crazy. But the other limited card we have, Trish Our Light Stage. Now, the reason why I'm going with Light Stage is my prediction is because TCG Konami and OCG Konami operate very differently. OCG Konami is known for actually hitting the problem cards like the Reincarnation, etc. But the TCG Konami is a little bit more passive on their hits. The TCG Konami likes to hit the consistency cards. They always hit the cards that make the decks or the plays consistent. Um, we've seen this time and time and time again, rather than hitting the problem cards, they hit the cards around it to search the cards, you know, like, oh, like the carries are mighties back in the day, you know, rather than them getting hit, the tour guy gets the hit, you know, the cards that bring them out, you know, and so that's, it's just, uh, it's been that same pattern, you know, don't hit the problem cards, hit the problem cards 
or hit the cards that make the problem cards consistent. That is TCG's logic. Now, it would either be Candida or Light Sage, but I'm going with Light Sage because if Light Sage was still at three, you can still abuse Light Sage with all the terraformings, and all you need is one Candida to combo off. But with one with one Light Sage, um, terraforming might be less valued. Not only that, but you know, terraforming. If you resolve it, you have two other dead cards in your deck, so you have to play your one copy of Light Sage carefully. And it stops the whole, you know, I set two back row and my opponent goes light stage, lock this one down, play another light stage, lock the other one down, you know, because that was kind of ridiculous. And not only that, but the search effects are not hard once per turns either. So, you know, the, the field spell is pretty damn good. It literally, I mean, it is, it's the bread and butter of the whole deck is, you know, believe it or not, granted Candina searches the cards, light stage is the card that locks down back row searches your you know your searcher for everything not only that but it can it also aids in the win condition of trick stars themselves so um i do agree with light stage going now there are a few cards i do want to mention that i haven't put on the list because again um this is tcg konami we're talking about we all know how they operate they don't like to bring cards back off the list and they don't like to hit cards, you know, that are quote-unquote problems until they become a problem. So cards like Firewall Dragon, I didn't put on the list because I know for a fact TCG Konami um, won't do anything until they become a problem. See, Firewall Dragon in the OCG was a problem at the time when they hit it. Um, Firewall Dragon now, all the top decks, all the best decks, the meta decks, they only play one. I mean, they can play multiples, but... Like, if you really paid attention to most of your matches versus meta decks, when was the last time you seen any of them go into more than one firewall? You know, all the people complaining about firewall are is probably the ones that get uh, that lose to rogue decks. And these, you know, road, you know, Konami doesn't like to hit rogue decks like that. You know, if a rogue deck, you know, ineffectively or indirectly gets hit, then it's because of a meta deck. However, firewall dragon is not. You know used at more than one quantity in meta decks because um these decks are not link spam besides spiral and all you're only getting the one firewall because if you try to go into a second one your plays become inconsistent and you expend too much resources so i don't think firewall will see a hit now sure it i would love to see that come back but um this is tcd Konami we're talking about and we all know tcd Konami does not Anything involving former best decks, I'm talking about things like Insectors, things like um, Dragon Rulers, things like, you know, Cosmos, Necros, Pepe, um, anything that was formerly a best deck in the game, um, TCD Konami ha does a really, really, you know, is just really known for not bringing any former best decks like any of the cards that were part of those decks back into the game. This is also why Construct hasn't uh, came back because I believe in DUEA format, I was under the impression that Teller Knights were the best deck at the time, but I guess it was uh, Shadal's when Construct got banned because Super Poly was pretty fucking strong. Not only that, but you know, Cosmos couldn't get promoted because Construct just kept blowing everything up. And so the Cosmos just could not get around Construct. So. Again, anything that was the best deck of its time, TCG Konami, you know, is really known for not bringing cards of those particular decks back. So that is why I'm not all that sure that Shurit would see a return. I really wish it would so I can start playing Necroz again, but uh, I've caught under the pattern of TCG Konami and most people have as well. And so, yeah. Things like Shrit, Construct, um, Stratos, you know, those cards. Uh, I just can't put them on the list because I realistically don't see them coming back. But we don't have anything at three, but we do have some things going to two. And it's only two cards. It's Grass and Snow. And what I see TCD Konami doing is they like to shift cards from one to two, uh, three to two. 
they they're really good with their semi limits. I do believe that snow will have to go down for grass to go up in account. Now I do not believe that they will bring snow to one to bring grass to three because they don't you know they've never done a reverse like that but you know if they want to give a little just throw a bone towards uh 60 card gra uh 60 card decks you know putting grass to two would be a way to go without you know completely relying on left arm offering but they would have to semi limit snow to make getting snow less consistent but that's not going to matter anyway with the new lights or link monster coming out um being able to just freely dump snow and so that's it for the um, the list. Now we're, we're gonna go on, and let's say let's say these hits happen, or let's say these hits don't happen. Let's say we do get a ban list, and we all know the three best decks are Spiral, Pendulum Magicians, and Trick Stars. So, what what is gonna conspire once Spirals get hit down another notch and are literally on the same playing field as every other deck? Well, let's go ahead and take a look, shall we? We're gonna go and delve right into it. See, here's what we got. We got, uh, I predict Pendulum Magicians will be the best deck because Electromite is pretty good, although, you know, I don't think so. I honestly think Trick Stars might be the best deck because even though Electromite comes out and Electromite gives them the pluses, I mean, the deck has had no problem at all getting pluses from the get-go. It's just all the fucking counters that really hurt the deck. So it's just like, yeah, all the counters are still there, and Electric might, um, elect, you know, games two and three, it might actually be hard to even make Electromite because those counters are still equally as effective, if that makes any sense. Um, Trick Stars, if Reincarnation goes to one, or if Light Sage goes to one, consistency will go down, but there is just more and more Trick Stars just coming into the mix. And Tricks, and, you know, Trick Star Reincarnation alone is. It's stupid. A lot of people say Droll is a problem card, but really it is Reincarnation simply because, um, first off, that Droll and Lock uh, combo is very, very inconsistent. Half the time, you know, your opponent has to search before it's even live. Second off, the success rate of the Droll and Lock combo is like, was it just under 30%? Of a, you know, so... But the Reincarnation, however, let's say a deck like Spiral, which actually has a few limited cards in it, if they get wind that one to two limited cards are in hand, they just Reincarnation, you rip, um, you rip their hand, you know, they, they more or less lose, because they lose their power cards, they lose their limited cards, and that's all, and you know, Reincarnation hurts a lot of rogue decks in that sense, because a lot of rogue decks have been good decks in the past, and they've had a lot of limits, and a lot of semi-limits, that work in tangent with other cards in the deck that have never come back to three and reincarnation is just incredibly disruptive in that regard you know there are just some some limited cards that have to go off or whatever and that that's a lot what a lot of people had a problem with ash blossom for the longest time but you know other than that you know reincarnation as long as it's in the game trick stars will still be a very strong deck. It might be the best deck. Um, Spirals will probably be about like the fourth or third best deck if, you know, any of those cards get hit, if like a mass plane gets banned or if a resort gets limited because again, it'll still very much be playable. It'll just be more control based and you might, they might even play more sleepers to compensate for the fact that, hey, I don't have like stupid power plays but I can make multiple sleepers and you know, get rid of my opponent's cards. Um, Infernoids and Light Sworns, I'm grouping them in together because when we get the Light Sworn Link Monster, you know, the consistency of both of these decks are going to be good and bolstered because that is when you can start abusing Grinder Golem. Grinder Golem, I'll be, isn't abusable in every deck. Any deck that uses the Light Sworn Link Monster can abuse this card. Um, you and you start with your two tokens, you make your Akashic, of course. And then you summon two more tokens again, then you sack one of them for Link Karibo, and then you make your Lightsworn Link Monster, you dump your card, you mill three, and, and it's a wrap. And in fact, Infernoid decks right now can abuse Grinder Golem. A lot, some uh, Inferno players are playing Grinder Golems right now as we speak in the main deck. Uh, why is that? Because the level two Infernoid, the one that returns to hand, you can abuse that. 
many times because that card is at three. Uh, Decatron is at three. One for one is still legal. And there's, there's just a few ways to special summon that level two Infernoid to continue to bounce the Grinder Golem and make bigger and bigger boards. And so Grinder Golem can already be abused in that. It can actually, it will start being abused in Light Sworn um, once the Link Monster comes out. Because you're not going to really need to depend too much on the Preda Plant engine and just having Ash Blossom literally end your whole turn. Um, granted, I hate that Grinder Golem forfeits a normal summon, so you'd have to choose between Grinder and, um, and, uh, uh, what's it, the Preda Plant, but, you know, I, w I would go with the Grinder Golem because less people are main decking Ogre than Ash Blossom, so, um, with that being said, it's not only that, but Ogre, mm, let's see, with, with the next few changes, I don't see Ogre really being, you know, heavily dominant. You know, I could see it hitting Electromite, which is good. You know, hit Electromite on the effect to put a card in the extra deck. That that can really uh, do something. Um, hitting the one light stage, if light stage gets limited, you know, that could be effective. Um, yeah, I, I see Ogre doing something. You know, I see ABCs also coming out of the woodworks because... Uh, Buster Dot deck is still really good, uh, but you know Winter Cherries holds the deck back. However, you know every ABC player should be main or side decking three pots. And what I mean by pot, I mean pot of acquisitiveness, because even right now, for some reason, you know Cherries is still or the people are still side Buster, still side it. Even though people say it's not a deck that's doing anything, but yeah, people still side deck Buster. Uh, with cherries but you know it's what else um world chalice i have granted i am a avid world chalice player big fan of the deck as i said multiple times you know the deck there's just not a lot of really good links to cover all the holes that world chalice has but we are getting skull deet in extreme force and gold skull deet is absolute nuts in world chalice literally opening venus is just going to be the stones once skull deet hits us into the um into the uh, new format um it makes our first turn boards more consistent and um if you still tutor the deck to go second you have a very good solid deck overall it becomes less glass cannon actually with the more links the more power links that come out the less glass cannon it is some resources is one thing we're going to need but we still um, not only that, but before we even get Extreme Force, we got this card EBE over here. This card is really going to help because it searches our hand trap, as in our Herald of um, uh, Orange Light. And actually, you can actually, with this, I can actually see people taking one copy of Green Light if they're going first. But... Uh, this is going to be played in the deck not only because it's a fairy, but if it's sent to the graveyard in any way, you can banish two other fairies and add up to two other light fairies to the hand. They can be effect monsters. Um, so after you're done with your Venus combo or whatever, you make your Skull Deed, whatever, and you 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 go into this and you send it to the grave with Brilliant Fusion with Lee from hand. Um, actually and the card will be even more consistent once extreme force comes out because um i'm sure a lot of people have forgot but downbeat is you know that card that was previously talked about like a reverse trans modify um i was thinking about playing downbeat in world chalice before because it could give me instant access to lee if i don't already have it you know from the venus but when I got wind of this card a few weeks ago, this actually gave me another target. Um, you know, other than just Lee, well, let's say I can, you know, it just gives you a way to, you know, use one of your shine balls for, you know, to go into something that can fetch you more cards. Um, you can also use it to stack another chain link to protect your really, really important cards from things like uh, Ash Blossom. You know, protect your legacy, protect your Ningirsus, protect your Skulldeet. Skulldeet will almost 100% be protected anyway because making Link Spider 
and then making M Duck at the bottom, and then going into Scoldy, well, automatically would be Chain Link One, and you chain M Duck like every single time unless you don't have a World Chalice in hand. So Scoldy will always resolve if you're playing World Chalice. You know, that is the other reason why. I do believe World Chalice will actually start becoming more played and more meta because of the fact that hand traps, you know, the deck is glass cannon, don't get me wrong, but the fact that most of the time you can cover your important cards be, uh, via chain link, the hand traps don't have very many opportunities to hit the the key cards. And so Ash Blossom when when Ash Blossom is trying to negate Legacy, when it's trying to negate Nagirsu or negate Skoldy every time, but it's always Chain Link One over something else, then that makes it, then that makes um, that um, that makes up for it, you know. So the deck can easily play around the hand traps. Sometimes they might not be able to, you know. But that is just my take on World Chalice. EBE being able to search um, heralds, you know, you know, uh, the only other hand trap that can negate monster effects. Now, if I decide to go first, or if my opponent makes me go first, and I end my combo, sin, you know, this hits the grave, I banish like a Venus and one Shine Ball, and I can add a herald of orange and green light and negate a spell and a trap card. Not only that, but maybe even already having a Gamma Seal on board with Waterfront or Christia, and it's just good game. Not only that, but you know, these are just amazing hand traps going second as well, because your opponent is not really expecting these, but we're all, they're already playing Ash Blossom in the main deck anyway, so that just adds extra insult to injury. I myself am not playing Ash Blossom in the main deck, because I'd rather break the board with three evenly matched, four Kaijus and a Slumber. You know, however, Ash Blossom is in my side deck in case I'm going against the Trickstar matchup, so there's that. Enough about World Chalice, you know, we're going to go um, last deck, you know, Invoked. Invoked um, is, I believe, it's going to start just being a splashable injury, uh, engine in more decks than it being just a pure hand trap dot deck because all these other decks hand traps really doesn't do too much against infernoid it doesn't do too much against light sworn you I mean granted if you ash a scorpio that's pretty good but last swords just have so many fucking power cards you know pendulum magicians you know ash blossoming a wavering eyes with a double high skill that's good but not a lot of people are gonna you know have two double irises and try to waver your eyes and not only that, but you got things like, you know, Trick Stars, Ash Blossom is okay against, but if Light Stage gets limited, then Ash is pretty, pretty damn amazing. You know, so there's that one deck. Um, again, World Chalice gets protected by the Chain Link. And speaking of which, uh, World Chalice got third place at an ARG, which, um, which is now putting, you know, I see it all over the Zodiac page. Uh, YouTubers is talking about it, so... Uh, World Chalice might officially be on the radar at this point, you know, but, you know, I'm surprised they weren't already considering that they've done so damn good at these regional level events, you know, one taking a first place, one taking a second, one taking a third, one taking a fifth, and a sixth place, so, you know, I guess at regional levels, you know, anything can top, so, it's whatever, I guess an ARG event where you have higher caliber players, and you have a World Chalice deck getting third place. You know, that's pretty good. I mean, granted, I heard that one of his cards was marked. I think it was the Trap Card Phantom Knight. That um, I don't know what marked cards, uh, if it influences your draw, per se. You know, I'm not sure if it was marked in the sense where, hey, I can, I see the certain little mark. I, I know exactly what the card is, or... Or it's like marked in a way, or it it compromises the sleeve in a way to where it affects your shuffle, and it affects your draw. I don't know what which kind of marked um, they could possibly mean, but you know, I'm just you know I just gotta throw that out there. So um, the last one being Burning Abyss, of course. Burning Abyss um, is still a very resilient deck. Still. Um, very, very few decks, if any at all, are not really 
there's very few decks maining decking Abyss Dweller because we just don't have the space for it anymore. You know, so that gives Burning Abyss the uh, edge unless... And people are putting Dante's in their side decks for cherries, so that gives them even more free passes um, in terms of games two and three. See, games two and three are tutored against Spirals, Pendulum Magicians, and and uh, Trick Stars, and none of them were anti-grave. Uh, none of those decks rely on the graveyard, so there was no anti-graveyard cards, so there was no need for Abyss Dweller. Granted, in my ABC deck, I still had Abyss Dweller in the main, and I managed to fuck up a Spiral player because of it. Um, but, you know, the fact that Abyss Dweller is not in main decks, really, because space is really tight in a lot of decks, gives Burning Abyss a little bit more breathing room. Um, all the different builds, you got the Infernoid build, the Phantom Knight build, the Pure build, you know, the, tra the Trap Heavy build. And Burning Abyss is just an all-around versatile deck that is probably the most resilient deck of all time and that has just withstood the test of time so that's it for this um discussion guys thank you guys for being patient with me um it was my um me and my girlfriend's uh one month anniversary yeah, that's like pretty important to her or something i didn't even know it was um i didn't even know it's been a month already but you know it's whatever um so that's why I didn't make a video yesterday, and that's why I'm doing it today. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what I could have missed in terms of that ban list discussion. You know, I tried my best not to make it a wish list. Again, the Confiscation and the Forceful Century are probably the two biggest eye-openers because, you know, people would assume those cards are so absurd, but you need to fight absurd cards with absurd cards, right? You know, again, it's a way to you know counter hand traps without designing something designing yet another stupid broken card that could probably do even more than just countering hand traps but can also you know yeah it can respond to hand traps without creating something even more broken but you know it's a it's at like a semi-limit status so it's not the most consistent but it can help um it can help you with going first and it can help you with going second which is important, very important. So, guys, thank you much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This is Jay Money, and I'm signing out.